Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to the Media Technical Committee talk with David Brenner, Gunnar Wolf, Elana Harshman, Sin Witton, Simon McVitie, Margarita Manterola, Philip Hans, and Nico Tiny. Enjoy. Uh, so, hello, everybody. Uh, this is the typical Meet the Technical Committee talk, except it's not. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, usually at DevConf, there's a Meet the Technical Committee talk where you get to meet those technical committee members that are present at DevConf. This year, because it's virtual, we get to have a virtual meeting, uh, which is different from our usual IRC meetings. And we want to take this opportunity to discuss how the technical committee can bring more value to Debian. So, we'll start with a very short presentation where we will talk a little bit about what the technical committee is um, and then uh, we will start our discussion of what we can do to get the technical committee to add value so first I'll share my screen and go through this very short presentation of what the technical So usually we would talk about like who is the technical committee. You can see this online. And we would also talk about what we did over the past year. I sent an email to Debian Devil Announce uh, with this so that we can skip over that. So if you care about that and you were expecting this talk to cover this, uh, go read that email. So this is important for the talk, so I will cover it uh, briefly, but a little bit so that everyone has this in mind. The technical committee is basically the only body in Debian that is ruled by the constitution. The deputy are also ruled by the constitution, but they are not bodies, they are just people. And the technical committee is the only body that is, that is like explicitly designed how it has to work. So we have to do what the constitution says. Uh, and so we we decide on matters of technical policy. We basically decide where developers' jurisdictions overlap, which means that when two people can't decide among themselves, they, uh, they come to us so that we make the decision. Uh, and we can also make a decision when someone asks us to make a decision, even if it's not about overruling a developer. Uh, if we want to overrule a decision made by a developer, we have to have three to one majority when we vote. And we can also offer advice. And actually, this is something that happens pretty often. If you see the bits that I sent in the last year, a lot of what we did was offer advice. Because, for example, we cannot overrule a delegate. But people still come with problems that are related to what the delegates do. And then we can offer advice of like, OK, maybe you can try this other way and and get there even if if like we cannot tell like we cannot override the delegate but we can try to help people get in the right direction uh, there's a bunch of constraints that we have to follow uh, all public all discussions have to be done in public all thinking has to be done in public we cannot do detailed design work so if if someone comes with a question and says like, okay, should it be A or B? And we say like, okay, neither A or B are good. We would like to pursue C. We cannot actually design this other solution. And we only make decisions as a last resort. So developers need to have exhausted all other possibilities before they reach us, uh, which usually means that by the time they reach us, uh, it's become a flame war. Um, yeah, so we have to break ties. Uh, all other efforts have to be tried and fail. And uh, we can offer advice, but it's just advice. I want to, yeah. We can offer advice at any point, but it's just advice. It, it does not carry any weight. So this has, it's kind of tricky. It, it There's things that, we sometimes have to actually make the right decision. And sorry about all this shitty going back and forth. Okay. And what happened? Okay, last slide. 
Uh, so the technical committee is self-nominated. This means that whenever we need to choose new members, it's chosen among the committee members. We try to aim for diversity of, of origin, of opinion, of technologies, but there's still possible and probable bias in how new members are chosen. The new members are appointed by the DPL, so we, we nominate the candidates that we think are good, and then the DPL appoints them. And as mentioned, it's, a, it's, it's used as a last resort when all other options have been exhausted, and we are a conflict resolution and advice providing body. All right, end of the presentation. And that's it. Cool. And now, with what we could do to make the committee better, to better serve Debian. And so now the idea is that we will discuss some of the proposals and see if brainstorming among ourselves and among whatever uh, people comment on IRC or on the pad, uh, we can reach some rough consensus. Doesn't need to be unanimous, but some rough consensus uh, of what we could do to make the committee more valuable to Debian in the future. And I think it's Alana's time now. Oh, great. Uh, so I get to introduce the first proposal. For those not looking at the ether pad, uh, I will read a little bit of it. Um, so the first uh, proposal uh, is summarized as private discussion uh, to allow developers to raise issues privately to the TC when they feel that they need advice or help in dealing with a hairy issue. So the idea would be that issues that need a public vote would still need to be raised and discussed in public, but issues that would lead to a no decision decision uh, can reach a more friendly resolution this way. So this proposal would imply that having a documented way of raising an issue privately and a set of expectations for what happens when this action is taken would be implemented. Um, so I was asked to introduce this proposal uh, after we discussed the, the five proposals, uh, or maybe there's only four in the ether pad because nobody liked number five on the committee. Um, but uh, my job is to introduce this one. I am very much in favor of this. I think to some extent, uh, the technical committee is somewhat limited in a different way than other teams in Debian uh, in this respect, uh, being the only uh, team uh, set out in the constitution uh, with limitations and whatnot there. And uh, like this puts us in a different position. Uh, if someone wants to come to me wearing my queen of Debian closure hat and discuss a proposal for improving the closure team privately, there's no problem with that. Uh, some people don't necessarily do their best work in public. Uh, and of course, you can go and take that work public later. There's nothing stopping that. But some people, you know, uh, not everybody's a performer or an actor or an artist. Uh, and uh, sometimes you just need to hash out things in a private context in order to get the best idea before that you can uh, produce those publicly. So uh, I think that this is a bit of a gap uh, to some extent in practice. Uh, and I would be all in favor of allowing for more limited private discussion. I think it can be very beneficial, particularly in like, say, issues that could potentially be contentious, uh, you know, for topics that are potentially uh, very fraught, uh, have a lot of, uh, you know, high tempers, emotions going, uh, being able to discuss those issues in a private context uh, without necessarily upsetting other folks and coming to a better idea of a better solution uh, could potentially be you know, uh, a good option to uh, diffuse tension or uh, uh, conflict uh, amongst technical issues. So I think that's probably a good introduction to this one. Does anybody on the committee have any thoughts? Yeah, I'd like to add a bit to this. Uh, uh, and well, looking at uh, what's being written in the pad on, on this topic, uh, uh, Didier is uh, writing that to some extent, at least in the recent past, the technical committee already discusses some things in private, such as potential nominations, mostly because it's unreasonable to do completely in public. Uh, two days ago, I was discussing with you in a private list that uh, it's, it's widely, uh, widely known that we have. 
I was discussing the the actual wording of uh, of the information I sent to the bulk that I had to do. I mean, it is known, and uh, we we argued over this over the general resolution uh, that uh, ended up uh, uh, like uh, agreeing not to open the Debian private uh, uh, archives that any group of developers can pri uh, privately communicate. Of course, what you're discussing here is uh, if I want to go on record say, uh, saying I contacted the technical committee for this and this and these reasons, well, uh, it may not be public. And the thing is, well, we have uh, grown and learned many things over the years, but uh, private communications are not as bad as we thought they would uh, they were. Yeah, and I don't know if you want to touch on my experience in other projects potentially, uh, but um, within, like, say, the context of uh, Kubernetes, for example, uh, the majority of all of our interactions uh, as a special uh, interest group or a SIG happen in public. Any decisions that are made, any discussions, uh, any proposals, uh, Kubernetes enhancement proposals or KEPs all take place in public discussion, but certainly as like leads of a SIG, uh, me and the other chairs and tech leads are able to discuss in private, have people approach us privately and redirect publicly as necessary. Uh, and uh, similarly, uh, in, uh, there are other projects that don't have nearly as much of a, uh, I think, like, uh, stated burden, uh, my work in the Python Packaging Authority, uh, like certainly none of that was required to be public. That was mostly just trying to be a good open source citizen uh, and a commitment to those values of transparency. And I think that it is, especially on the, the context of technical issues, it's pretty easy to balance those safely uh, without losing transparency uh, while ensuring that, you know, the things that need to be private stay private. Right, so I think uh, the main issue is people raising concerns. And I think the someone, I don't know who is writing this on the pad right now. So if someone has a concern and they want to come to the technical committee for, for advice, for like, I don't know how to deal with this and we might need help, but I don't want to be like the person that uh, went to the technical committee, whatever, um, in order to do that, they need to do it publicly. We do have a private mailing list, but it's not like, it's not a point of contact for those people. So I think that that's the part that we need to decide whether we want to change it or not. Because yes, we have a private mailing list, but it's not supposed to be used for any discussions or any like public issues. It's different than, okay, we are discussing how to word a uh, response. Yeah, that's, that's not actually a discussion because we already agree. We are just like nitpicking the wording. But if we are talking about like someone is raising an issue to us, we don't have a process where someone can raise that issue with confidentiality. So do we want to have that process? Do, you, do we think the constitutional amendment needed to have that process would be worth the time or the, the yeah, so all that effort would be worth what then we would add to the project, the value that we would add to the project. I think it's perhaps um, worth looking at the context of um, why we're, we're meant to work in public and have um, transparency on our like formal decisions. And Obviously, if we're going to overrule a developer, there is an expectation that we have a public justification of um, here is why we're overruling you. Because if we can't provide that, then, you know, that, um, that developer is, is just going to think, well, why are they even overruling me? I'm right. Um, and we should have transparency on that. Um, but if we, if someone, if someone comes to us and says, I want, I want to overrule someone, and our conclusion is, no, we're not going to, then does that need to be public? 
so uh, I guess sometimes there's sort of an ongoing issue where multiple people might come up against the same thing and uh, well, I mean, I guess we always have the option of making some sort of position public, but uh, I can imagine that someone might find it helpful to be reminded, oh, yeah, the committee can't over-delegate, so maybe filing the seventh or contact making the seventh contact about something to do with the FTP masters isn't the most productive way. Maybe I should focus on some other approach to the problem. So I don't know. It's a little bit of a devil's advocate uh, comment. But I think that the the times when we don't intervene, we might still have something uh, possibly constructive to say. I think we probably need to we probably need to think of this issue focusing on the point that it's only the TC that's like this. I mean, the policy team has deals with similar sorts of issues, not the same, but similar sorts of issues. We can work in private. Um, I guess if we're not going to make a change like this, we need to be clear about the project needs to be clear about why the TC is different because I don't think we are right now. I would like just to make a, a note here. We have uh, well four important issues to cover, and we are one third already of the uh, uh, of the exposition time we have. So I would uh, push for covering the rest of the points and and uh, having short discussion on each, uh, so we can uh, manage to. Sure. Yeah, I, I have no uh, issue with that. Uh, maybe I'll just wrap this one up by saying I think that like. Some of these discussions are going to demonstrate limitations in terms of maybe like what the constitution says versus like what might actually be the best practices versus like what's happening in reality uh, or what people would like to happen in reality. And so uh, I hope that people approach these with an open mind and uh, view these as opportunities to make things better. Uh, and th this one I think is pretty low hanging fruit, uh, but uh, on to our next topic. Okay. Um, so our next topic is um, allowing the TC to be invoked early. Um, so uh, Marga touched on touched on this in her introduction. Um, the um, one of the one of the problems with the technical committee is that because we're we're a decision making body of last resort by the time anything gets brought to us people have already been arguing about it for longer than they'd like to so positions are already entrenched even if like alice is trying to overrule bob and at the beginning bob was not sure either by the time things come to us um uh, but both both the people involved um, probably are very sure about what their position is and really don't want to change it, which is obviously a bad bad point for us to be starting from when at least one of them is going to have to be disappointed. Um, we do have um, things that the Constitution lets us do that are not a last resort. Uh, we can be asked for advice. Um, I can't think of any cases where this has actually happened, apart from me asking the technical committee for advice when I was already on the technical committee, which was a little strange, but um, really useful, in fact. Um, I still haven't implemented the result, but I'll get around to it. The other thing the Constitution lets us do is we can just offer unsolicited advice. I suspect the project would not thank us for doing that too often. Um, but perhaps we should be doing that more than we already do. Um, and um, perhaps we should be spotting contentious problems and 
offering advice on them with, with our technical committee hats on rather than just as individuals um, before they become an ongoing disaster. So uh, it sounds great. Um, I wonder if we actually can do it. So recently, a developer approached us informally on IRC about a problem. And I mean, OK, there are a lot of other constraints. But I think one thing that that made clear to me was that uh, at least I personally didn't have a lot of time to just jump in on that and deal with the problem quickly. And, uh, you know, even more so to try and get us to act as a group. Judging that we have consensus is itself a time consuming thing, right? Even if we all agree and none of us have had to like be argued around or change our opinions or anything it still takes time for us to realize that we agree. Or even just the mechanics of everybody signals in some way that they agree with the, the committee position. I mean, right. I don't know this is an argument against, but it's something to ponder is how could we actually do such things in practice? Right, so I think Didier also commented on this in the pad, saying that it's it's hard to act as the technical committee, like as a body instead of as individuals, right? For us, it's very easy. Like someone can go read the bug and give their own opinion on the bug. And it's like, it's my opinion, it's your opinion, whatever. And it's easy to do that. But if we have to give the opinion of the technical committee as a body, we need to actually yeah, take the time to figure out if we agree or not, even if we don't go through a vote because it doesn't require a vote, but like we do need to go through a meeting or some kind of formal agreement if we are acting as a body. So I think, I guess what we are identifying here is that the tricky part here is to act as the committee, but could we maybe light the weight somehow having like a, technical committee on-call person that, uh, uh, I don't know, does like the first dry edge of the bug and, and sees if there's something easy that can be done. And then if it's not easy, then escalate to the rest of the committee. I don't know. This is just some idea. Uh, if you have better ideas, please chime in. Yeah. So I think probably there's a lot of sort of interesting procedural hacks we could try and think about. And maybe that's a sort of item to to come out of this is hmm this seems like a good idea but we need some sort of concrete ideas of how it would work before we propose it to the project as a as a constitutional change or or maybe it wouldn't even need a constitutional change i don't know but yeah i'm i'm, I'm thinking on the issues of practice practicality on, on on what's being discussed here i mean uh, we could be monitoring every mailing list. We could be monitoring uh, every IRC channel and uh, discussing on the back. Uh, well, should we jump on this? But the thing is, nobody among us is present everywhere. Of course, we can uh, bring issues we detect to the attention of the rest of the group. But still, in order to, to, to jump over this issue that we are seen as last resort, well, we are defined as last resort, uh, People need to know they they can ask for our opinion early on. Uh, but what what can trigger somebody asking uh, our opinion uh, in a more friendly, uh, less formal way? Yeah. So so the same developer who, who I'm leaving anonymous because um, I don't want to maybe they don't want to out themselves here, but suggested some idea of a sort of preliminary injunction to use pseudo legal terminology so something urgently needs to be done and here's what we think should be done now and the full body will consider it later or something along those lines i mean i, I don't think we're going to work out the details on this call but um just to th throw out an idea which had been presented 
I guess there is a tension here between the technical committee as like people whose advice you can ask and the technical committee as the as the last resort body because uh like if 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 someone has asked us for advice and for instance I have informally said something about it and then it continues being a contentious discussion and someone maybe the same person maybe a different person raises that question to us more formally as like a bug that we have to deal with through the full constitutional thing and have a vote on should i um does that mean i need to be like not participating in the formal bit because i already gave informal advice which seems kind of strange but um all, you know we we don't we don't we don't want people feeling that the deck's stacked against them um do, do we do we need to make an effort to be impartial and and does does that conflict with giving informal advice i i sort of think we have 99 problems and impartiality isn't in the top 50 fair Okay, I think we don't have uh, much of an answer here. Uh, so uh, let's keep going. And then maybe after we cover the whole thing, we can see if we have any writer ideas. Uh, so, okay, so the next proposal uh, was about having a mediation body. And what I said uh, here in, in the original doc was that Currently, there's no specific team in Debian that is in charge of resolving social conflict that is not a code of conduct violation. So like when people just cannot agree, but they are not doing anything too nasty, they just can't agree. And uh, there's because we are Debian, there's always going to be a technical component on any discussion. But the problem that needs solving is not the technical one, because the technical one usually is solvable if people are speaking to each other. And the problem is when people are not speaking to each other. So in many cases, we need someone to mediate between the two parties so that they can eventually get to a solution that is good for both of them. And currently, we don't have anyone that's specifically delegated for that. So the DPL. I've been told by previous DPLs that the DPL does a lot of this. And we, as a technical committee, also do some of this because a lot of the problems that are raised to us are not. The problem itself is not technical, even though there is a technical thing in between. And I don't know, but I guess the community team also does this in some part. I don't know. And um, I've been away from that team for too long. So the proposal here was to explicitly delegate the mediation task for solving social conflict to somebody. And the body could be the technical committee. It could be a different body, like another delegation. Or it could be the community team. Uh, for what it would be actually nice to have the opinion of someone from the community team here. Uh, but uh, if, if someone is listening to this and is in the community team, we actually do want to hear your opinion. But before we do that, um, there was a question from Holger uh, when we first presented this like a month ago, which was what do other committee members think it's the right option? And the options are like a new group, the community team, the technical committee. And I guess we could say none of the above, like, like uh, further discussion or whatever, like not delegate, not explicitly delegating if you think that explicit delegation of a mediation body is not the right answer. So I'd like to hear from other committee members now. Um, personally, I think it's a bit of a problem having a delegation for this because it really depends who's involved in the uh, the dispute or the uh, the situation, whether they're going to find a particular mediator acceptable. And it could be that it's only someone that one of the parties approaches that uh, 
that is going to be acceptable and they might just not get along with the people that are in the mediation committee if there is such a thing. So I think it's, it's useful to encourage people to get in touch with you know, all of the people mentioned, but they've got to be willing to actually to, to deal with that. You know, the individual that ends up trying to mediate has to be acceptable to both sides. One of the things that I think we need to consider, uh, uh, like from a process perspective here, um, I don't know that I'm necessarily uh, like in support of explicitly delegating like the social conflict mediation to the technical committee. But uh, one of the things that I think we do need to uh, be concerned about is, you know, what if somebody, uh, if, if that's the direction that we go, what if somebody on the committee is part of that dispute? Like, you know, how do you, uh, how do you ensure that that person can recuse themselves from the decision or that there's like an escalation path that does not involve them being in the decision making process for uh, mediating uh, or uh, resolving the problem? There's a comment on IRC uh, from Molly LeBlanc. Uh, she says, uh, I'm talking as part of the community team. I think we need to clearly define what mediation means. As to many of us, the community team, mean, it means a specific negotiation process. We are not interested in mediation as we think of it. Also, I disagree that everything has a technical aspect. We have plenty of issues these days that are purely social. So yeah, I, I, I mean, I completely agree with her. Mediation is a very broad term and uh, it's very hard to really define what we are talking about when we talk about it. Yeah, I, I think the technical committee, uh, like certainly there are social aspects, but I, I agree with Molly that not every problem is a technical problem. Uh, and so I definitely don't think from that perspective, it makes sense to invoke the technical committee if the problem is a purely social problem. And I think even sometimes when like the technical details, like uh, in, in some sense, you know, Marga says this is a technical project. There's always going to be technical things. But fundamentally, you know, like if the problem is uh, there happens to be a technical aspect, but fundamentally the problem is not technical, like that's just kind of an excuse. Uh, like I don't think that it necessarily makes sense to invoke the technical committee. But do the parties involved agree that it's just an excuse, I guess? I mean, I think people often have different views of what the what is being disputed, right? So the disputants may well both feel that there's a, a strong technical issue and it's just our own, or we might, or a, an observer might feel differently, but how, you know, they're, they're gonna feel that it's a technical issue. Um, yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Uh, I'm not thinking of the issue, uh, the sort of issue where like both people think they have a technical issue, but it turns out it's a social one. I'm thinking more of issues where someone is insisting that it's a technical issue, the other person says it's not, and this person is like, well, I want to invoke the TC. Uh, like that could potentially be used as a form of harassment, right? Uh, yes. We'll tell, let's talk stories in private illegally sometime. As a new member of the technical committee, I can say uh, very publicly that no such thing has happened uh, while I've been on this committee. So I have no such experience. I mean, in a sense, if you have that situation where one side thinks it's technical and one side thinks it doesn't, then a TC that was partially empowered to engage in social issues might be exactly the body you want to sort things out. Uh, like, I agree with you that there is potential for harassment there, but also you avoid uh, a lot of arguments about what kind of issue it is if the body is empowered to deal with both kinds of issue. I, I guess the question about what is mediation is an interesting one to me. I mean, are we thinking about it like so-called binding mediation? where both parties say, okay, we have this disagreement and we're going to come to the technical committee and we agree to abide by whatever the outcome is. I mean, I guess for our normal process, that is sort of implicit. And I don't know if maybe you'd want to change that or whether that makes sense for if we're thinking about different class of problems or this is just, here's our process, which is you come to us 
you don't necessarily file a bug or whatever, but you know, both parties will agree to b abide by whatever the decision of the TC is. Uh, I think the problem with that is that, uh, referring back to the idea that sometimes people seem to use the technical committee as a, a stick to beat other people with, um, if that's going on, then um, the technical committee being the mediation body is really hard. And we haven't even managed in those situations to tell the person explicitly off for doing it normally. So we'll come up with a decision that means they don't get their way because we feel like we're being used as a weapon. But we won't say stop using us as a weapon. And if you're not going to be explicit about it, then how can you mediate that situation? I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know that the technical committee right now really has any tools for saying this is a legitimate grievance versus this was not brought to us in good faith. No, the closest we come is just closing bugs, saying, okay, we decline to engage with this. Won't fix. Declined with extreme prejudice. Yeah, we can we can always say that. We can always like be explicit about like we we think this is abusing the the, the procedure of raising issues to the DC if if that's what we think, but that also would make people unhappy and we are trying to like keep a productive conversation. And uh, and I take the, the the things about like mediation might not be the right word and and yeah, maybe it's not the right word and what I was aiming for was uh, helping people communicate when they are not listening to each other and helping them find the solution that they both agree with. And of course, this is very hard. And the thing about like, is this a binding thing or not? I, I'm not sure we want to have binding decisions in the social aspect, like having the binding decisions in the technical aspect is as kind of like the big power the TC has. If we add having the binding decisions on the social aspects, it's like it might be too much. But maybe it's what's needed. I'm not really sure there. I think we should mo move on to the last thing, which was uh, design work. And Phil is going to introduce it. OK, so this is, as Marga mentioned in her talk, this is quite often about we're presented with option A or option B, and they're both fairly obviously flawed in some way. Or sometimes it's we're presented with option A and option B because they can't both be done within the, uh, the project because of other flaws, wider flaws in the way the project does things. And it would be really nice to have some new um, sort of supporting structure that could be designed that would allow both people to get their way, but we just don't have it. So in those situations, it's really tempting to say, we could design them, such a thing. Now, I, I've typed into the, uh, the pad some of the arguments that were uh, gone over in the, the emails. Uh, I won't read them out because it, we haven't got much time. Uh, while doing that, it occurred to me that the biggest problem with doing this is that it raises the bar on how difficult people think the job of being in the TC will be. And the people that are on the cusp of deciding that they might will you know, have a sort of flair of imposter syndrome thinking, I can't possibly dive into other people's area of expertise and do design and not do it. And we'll lose a bit more diversity from the technical committee. And that's my reason for not thinking it's a good idea. I, that's not to say I don't think it's a good idea to design these things. I think we should design things somehow, but maybe that should be done by having the technical committee saying, we need a working group to design a thing, and then when you're finished, come back to us and we'll choose between A, B, and C. Or we need a working group to design some new structure that allows people to do both A and B. And then members of the technical committee could even join in, and hopefully the two 
disputing parties would join in and design something that they're both happy with. And then we can actually take advantage of the fact that we're a duocracy and the people on that working group might actually do the thing that we've designed. If we as the technical committee design something, I feel that it's going to be saying, we don't like options A or B, so here's C for you to do. And party A and party B will say, actually, I've got better things to do with my life, bye. And we'll just lose both of them. So if you want to read the things on the etherpad and have an argument about the points, go ahead. Um, but that's my position. What he said. Hmm? Sorry, what? All excellent points. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I think and I think I agree, and I was the one raising this as something that we should consider. But uh, after having read all, all the arguments that Phil uh, prepared against it, and uh, I think that the one that uh, speaks the most to me is the design by committee. Uh, I don't think we want design by committee, but yeah, I, and also uh, we are already not liked when we decide something and someone else has to implement it and this is just taking a decision if we are the ones implementing it could raise even more anger but then the question is how do we solve the issues when we have this a or b and and none of the those are a good option and maybe it's just um a cultural thing that we should feel more comfortable saying we strongly recommend that a working group is formed to design a better solution or something like that. I don't know, maybe something more strong than strongly recommend. Uh, but not that the technical committee does the design, but that we say we need a design on this and, and somehow convince people to work on it, even though we can't force them to work on it. I, I don't know what we could do to incentivize <laughs> that. Would it perhaps help? If um, if we're presented with option A, option B, and we don't really like either of them, um, would it perhaps help if we if the result was we ca we came up with um, here are the requirements we think design C ought to meet. Please come back with a design that at least meets more of them than A or B does. We can do that already, right? There's right. nothing stopping us from doing right. that. I, 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 don't, I don't mean so much um, whether we can as whether we should be making a point of doing that more often and like having it in, in our like introduction to the technical committee that this is a thing that we should be trying to do. Sounds good to me. So yeah, I guess this might be one of the points where we what we take away from it is, hey, we don't need a GR for this. We just need to sort of do better, think about what we should be doing. Because I guess, I mean, if we don't want to sort of go against the spirit, I mean, a detailed enough set of specifications is a bit dicey, right? We would have to. I mean, trust ourselves that we don't consider, you know, some broad requirements or some key requirements to be design work. And I guess we'd also have to get consensus from the project that that's, you know, reasonable uh, in terms of what they expect from the TC. When it, when it comes to forming working groups, we might do that. We might um, form the groups or at least coordinate the forming of the groups uh, that might add some impetus that doesn't exist when it's just like, you know, decision is written, it's posted to the bug, bug is closed, like, and technical committee signs off in a sense. If we were, if we uh, just, just as a form of coordination uh, may cause these working groups to be formed, that might help. Maybe, maybe not, but it could. I think that would help a lot, actually, because I get the, I don't know uh, how it looks looking in from the outside, um, but I get the impression that sometimes we act in a way that could easily be interpreted as passive aggressive. And if we were 
being more obviously constructive, I think that would help. All Sorry, right. Guess. Yeah, uh, we so, are basically out of time. Uh, David, were you trying to wrap up? No, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I was just going to say we we are basically out of time. I don't know if like anybody has like anything pressing that you want to raise and have like as as the last words. Uh, otherwise, we can always keep discussing on like the IRC channel and the pad and wherever. Uh, but. Yeah, if you have some last words of wisdom, go ahead. Not sure last words of wisdom, but uh, this is my last words as far as being at a DebConf is concerned in the technical committee, unless I'm stupid enough to volunteer again, because I think I'm sitting closest to the exit. So bye-bye. <laughs>